Lexington police arrest two men wanted in connection to a string of robberies. Coming up, we'll explain how a girlfriend of one of the men helped officers catch him. Hillary Clinton prepares to take the stage for the most important speech of her political career. I'm Don Champion in Philadelphia with a preview of the final night of the Democratic National Convention coming up. Live sky camera showing an ugly shot outside. Still a lot of heavy rain outside. I'll show you when it starts to move on out and we can when we can drop the concerns about flash flooding. That's coming up. WKYT News starts now with first alert weather. Good afternoon on a rainy Thursday from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. Storms are dumping heavy rain totals across the Bluegrass region today. And we're getting reports of high water in Boyle, Clark, and Montgomery counties now. This is a WKYT first alert severe weather day. And meteorologist Micah Harris is tracking the system on our first alert defender network. Yeah, and we're looking at those showers rolling across the region. We actually have a flash flood warning in effect until 245. Bath, Fleming, Menifee, Montgomery, Powell, and Rowan counties. Once again, till 245, seeing tremendous amounts of rain in these spots and many spots too. But these are where reports are actually coming out of in those areas. So just keep in mind that we're going to be rolling with some more rain flashing across the region. Now starting to edge its way down in southeastern Kentucky. You guys haven't really had rain that much early this morning or early this morning. And then once we hit the afternoon, it looks like the bulk of the rain really slides on in here. But once again, that Mount Sterling, Winchester area, those two areas we've had reports from guys of some flash flooding. Got to keep that in mind. We'll have updates as we go throughout the afternoon. Okay, see you then. Now, as Micah mentioned, flooding reports are quickly popping up across the region. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell is on the phone now. He is heading out to, to check the reports of this high water in Mount Sterling. Uh, Jim, what are we hearing at this point? Well, guys, we're about a couple of minutes away from Mount Sterling right now, but so far what we've heard and what we've seen through social media uh, suggests that uh, several roads throughout the county have been covered in water. One in particular uh, is part of Main Street, several inches of water flowing over it at this time. Also along 11, we have reports maybe up to uh, a couple of feet of water flowing over it. So a lot of high water showing up around here. And as Micah just mentioned, the rain is still coming in this general direction, so the concerns for uh, flooding will remain high here over the next little bit. Now, we hope to get more information, get you some, uh, actually get to see it ourselves coming up for you at 1230. All right, Jim, keep us posted on that. Thank you. Police believe weather may have been a factor in an early morning accident in Lexington. The driver crashed into a man in a wheelchair on South Broadway near Gibson Avenue around 3.30 this morning. The victim was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. You can get an up-to-date forecast anytime on WKYT.com and on the WKYT News app. You can download it for free in the app or Google Play stores. In other news at noon, two deputies are recovering this midday after getting into a fight with a suspect in southeastern Kentucky. It happened this morning in Jackson County off of U.S. 421, not far from Berea. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is there with the latest. Hillary? The Jackson County Sheriff says they responded to a home on DM Road here behind me. However, he says when deputies got to that home, they quickly realized that report of a shooting was false. The sheriff says a man who has not yet been identified went into the home on DM Road to check on someone inside. He says that man was either under the influence of drugs or mentally ill. Sheriff Paul Hayes says the man then got into a fight with the people inside. And once his deputies got there, they too became involved in the altercation. Two of those deputies receiving injuries. The neighbors nearby say they have great concern about what's going on at that home. Tim Boggs has lived here for 16 years. He says he's never felt uneasy in his own home until these last few months. What you see and the traffic, uh, the people that lives around here, you know, I don't even consider or worry about them. But it's the traffic, the outside traffic, the people coming through, uh, doing whatever they're doing, that concerns me. I mean. Whenever you can't lay down and sleep of the night for traffic going up and down the road, uh, 
what what are they to do in this neighborhood at two, three, or four o'clock in the morning? The sheriff says both of his deputies were taken to a local hospital, but are expected to be okay. In Jackson County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Hillary, thank you. The sheriff says charges against the man are pending, but the list, he says, will be long. The search continues this midday for the person who drove a truck through a Louisville gun shop. It's the second time in two days that this has happened in the Derby City. WKYT's Rebecca Smith is at the live desk now with the latest on the investigation. Rebecca? Yesterday it was a Corvette and today it was a truck. The 111 gun shop in Louisville is damaged after a truck rammed through the store at about 4 o'clock this morning. The SWAT team was called in and determined no one was inside that building. Inventory still being counted to see if or how many guns were stolen. Yesterday, police say it took less than 10 seconds for someone to break into Tilford's gun store after ramming through the building with a stolen Corvette. In that case, thousands of dollars worth of guns were stolen. An eyewitness had his own ideas on the MO of the suspect. I think that was kind of crazy to me. Why would you use a Corvette for one? Why wouldn't you use a bigger truck or something? Well, that's exactly what happened. Somebody apparently got the idea from that. The owner of the first gun store hit, Tilford's, says he'll have to shut down the shop for a week to make repairs. Now police have the task of determining if there is a connection here with the latest gun shop burglary. At the live desk, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. Right now, police are looking at surveillance video to try and determine who's responsible. Two men accused in a separate string of robberies in Lexington will be facing a judge in about an hour. Kelly Cox is charged with three counts of robbery. He is accused of robbing two banks and a gas station. And Sean Taylor is accused of holding up a bank in April and then another bank last week. WKYT's Mark Barber is outside the Fayette County Court Complex with the latest on both of those cases. Mark? Police found Kelly Cox at his home yesterday afternoon and arrested him after his girlfriend recognized a picture of him on the news and called police. She told the detective that he was also using her car as his getaway car. Police say the 35-year-old has been busy robbing banks and running from the law the past week. Officers tell WKYT Cox robbed a Marathon gas station on North Broadway, a fifth third bank on Versailles Road, and a fork bank on New Circle Road in the past eight days. Our cameras were rolling back in 2011 after Cox held up this same bank and crashed after he tried to speed away from police. He was out on parole when the latest robberies happened. Cox was becoming more desperate. Uh, he had a narcotics problem uh, and his addiction was driving his uh, actions. So he was committing more robberies to fund that drug problem he had. So we're very thankful we got him off the street. A second man was also arrested and charged in three unrelated robberies yesterday. 36-year-old Sean Taylor is accused of robbing a fifth third bank and tried to rob a People's Exchange Bank back in April. Police say he popped back up on their radar when he held up the Republic Bank on Harrodsburg Road five days ago. A lot of those banks and their employees were getting concerned, and, and it's, a, it's unnerving. So it's good. I think it's good for all of us uh, to get them to get them uh, without any incident uh, was a win for all of us. The two men will both walk up the steps here at the Fayette County District Courthouse to stand before a judge at 1 o'clock. In Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Mark, thank you. And both men are charged with three counts of robbery. Cox is also charged with violating his parole. Tonight at the Democratic National Convention, Hillary Clinton will formally accept the party's nomination for president. She made her first in-person appearance last night after a stirring speech from President Obama. Don Champion is in Philadelphia with the latest on campaign 2016. With an embrace on the convention stage, President Barack Obama handed the reins to the Democratic nominee. There has never been a man or a woman, not me, not Bill, nobody, more qualified than Hillary Clinton to serve as President of the United States of America. Voters got to know Hillary Clinton's running mate, Tim Kaine. I was born in Minnesota and grew up in Kansas City. He laid out his resume and then went on the attack against Republican rival Donald Trump. We're going to build a wall and make Mexico pay for it, believe me. There's nothing suspicious in my tax returns, believe me. 
The Clinton campaign says the theme of this final day is that the country is stronger together and that all Americans should have the opportunity to fulfill their potential. Judith Levine is a professor of sociology and women's studies and says Clinton's speech tonight could resonate for years to come. We've heard the word historic a lot and we're almost getting, you know, bored of that word, but it is really historic. Donald as Ivanka Trump introduced her father at the Republican convention, tonight will be the Democrats' version. Chelsea Clinton will introduce her mother, who will step forward to accept the party's nomination. Don Champion, CBS News, Philadelphia. Now, one of the country's most impoverished cities will get some time in the Democratic convention spotlight today with some help from Lady Gaga. Thousands of convention delegates have been invited across the Delaware River to Camden, New Jersey for an afternoon concert with the pop star. The show also will include a performance by Lenny Kravitz. Keep it here on WKYT News. Pope Francis has a misstep while performing an open air mass in Poland. We'll show you what happened coming up on Kentucky's number one midday news. Also ahead, hit country duo Florida Georgia Line is on the defense after coming under fire from fans for keeping armed police officers out of their shows. We'll have their side of the story next on WKYT. Welcome back to WKYT News at Noon. Vice President Biden and Attorney General Loretta Lynch will be speaking at a public vigil in Baton Rouge, Louisiana this afternoon, honoring the three police officers who lost their lives in the line of duty. The officers were ambushed by a former Marine more than a week ago. The gunman was later killed by a SWAT team. Authorities say today's event will give the community a chance to celebrate the officers' service and sacrifice. Russia's Olympic athletes are heading to Rio as global sports bodies continue to decide whether to ban them from the Games. Earlier this month, the International Olympic Committee decided to ignore a call for a banquet ban over allegations of state-backed doping in Russia. The Russian track and field athletes are among the 105 members already banned, along with the canoeing and the kayaking teams. It remains to be seen how many athletes will be allowed to compete but more bans are expected. Pope Francis is okay after a mishap at a mass in Poland. His Holiness was walking to the altar when he suddenly tripped on a step and fell to the ground during an open air mass this morning. The pontiff was helped to his feet by other clergy members and resumed the service. Tens of thousands of people came to see Pope Francis who is on a five day pilgrimage to the country. Officials are warning anyone who tries to break through security barriers to get to touch Francis are at risk of being shot. Members of the popular country music group Florida Georgia Line are defending their support for police after a concert in Wisconsin. The band came under fire when rumors started flying that they requested no police presence backstage during last weekend's show. Florida Georgia Line says they did not mean any disrespect and that it was a simple misunderstanding. Their management was reportedly asked if the duo wanted local law enforcement for extra security, but they felt it was redundant because they already had security on hand. Was he serious or was he being sarcastic? Donald Trump talks about his comments on hackers and Hillary Clinton. I'm Greg Boswell at the White House. That's coming up. We're seeing some really heavy rain outside at this moment over toward eastern Kentucky where we have had some reports of flash flooding across the region, especially the Mount Sterling area and then back toward Winchester where we do have a flash flood warning in effect until 245. But that was that storm. That complex is now off toward Grayson County or, or off toward Grayson there in Carter County and then off into Elliott. That's a very heavy thunderstorm. But for our viewing area, Moorhead still drenched. Owingsville still with those showers. We're actually getting a break here, North Middletown and Paris. But where we have seen the damage, where we have seen a lot of this flooding, Mount Sterling and Winchester still holding on to at least some sprinkles at this moment, have a little bit more rain on the way. So until 245, portions of Bath County, Fleming, Menifee, Montgomery, Powell, and Rowan. Now, I haven't heard of any reports there in most of these locations, but just due to the fact, just looking at radar estimates, if we've picked up that much rain there in Mount Sterling, where there's six plus inches there on East Main Street at this moment, 
well then more than likely you're going to have a lot of that rain in toward other portions of the viewing area too from Flemingsburg down toward Hillsboro go into Sharpsburg Owingsville go down 60 Lakeview Heights Moorhead very, very soggy conditions, and Powell County is included into that. Let's go southbound, and that's where we're seeing some of those thunderstorms spike up across the How Rogers Parkway into Hyden Community. Manchester, you're going to be next in line coming out of London Corbin area. And just about, I would say, 20 minutes or so, Boomville, Beattyville getting in on the action, and Jackson too. And then the next batch, here's your next wave. It just doesn't look like it's wanting to stop. I will tell you this, though. Back behind this, there's actually a, a piece of energy that's kicking that eastbound. So instead of this rolling up toward the Bluegrass Parkway, this is more rolling toward the BG area, more of the, the region, okay? Lexington, Richmond, Danville, in that area. So once again, Danville, you're not over with. Junction City, I've seen a lot of rain there. You're not over with. We're still looking at least that chance at some heavier rain. But watch this going hour by hour on our high resolution model. When does this stuff stop? Here's 5 p.m. Still looking at uh, some scattered showers, a couple of rumbles of thunder, but the bulk is now over in eastern, southeastern Kentucky. And then look at 7, 8, 9 p.m. Look how much it fades away. Evening hours is really not much going on. It's really the rest of the afternoon. Then it fades away during the evening and off into the nighttime. It's more of hit and miss. Not a great chance of rain there on Friday, but we're still looking at at least a chance 30, 40% on Friday. Saturday is a little better opportunity at 60%. All three of those days, though, in towards Sunday, that's hit and miss. It's not like widespread rain like you're seeing now. So you can make plans. Just know you're going to have to possibly dodge a few rumbles of thunder. Okay. A wet afternoon and then Fair. some improvements. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. So, okay. Thank, thank you. you. We're coming back on WKYT. How a Kentucky coach paved the way for a world record. And the Derby winner tries to get back on track on the track. Dave Baker's next for sports. This time last year, Central Kentucky was getting cranked up for the Breeders' Cup. And even though the event is in California this time around, looks like we're going to get some outstanding fall racing beginning Sunday as Kentucky Derby winner Nyquist will make his first start since the Preakness in the $1 million Haskell. The two-year-old champion will face Exaggerator, the horse who beat him in the Preakness, giving Nyquist his first career loss also in the race. Gunrunner, third place finisher in the Derby, Brody's Cause, seventh in the Derby, and Bob Baffert's American Freedom, the lightly raced son of Pulpit. Baffert looking for a record ninth win in the Haskell. Well, people love to evaluate big time athletics directors on how their football and basketball teams are doing, but look at the way Mitch Barnhart has upgraded the entire UK athletics program. Case in point, track and field. Barnhart brought Edric Florial to Lexington, and yesterday he was out at the UK track working out two former cats who will compete in Rio in the Olympics, and Kendra Harrison, the new world record holder in the 100 meter hurdles. After the disappointment of not making the U.S. Olympic team, it was Floriel who had to get Harrison's mind right. It was not an easy process in the short time between Olympic disappointment and a record-setting day in London. Uh, two days before London, she was like, I, I don't want to go. I don't want to be bothered. And then so I was like, no, I, I already bought a ticket, and then we're going. And, and I just wanted her to go back and kind of do what I thought she could do. I just kept on task in London. There, there was no smile, no laughing. This is the next thing. And you know, she was like, am I doing good? Because you didn't say anything. I was like, I have nothing to say, but you got one more of these. And so, so one of those things where I just, I was so focused and so fierce that she just like took on my persona a little bit. And that's kind of what I look back in, in Eugene. I just wish I would have probably had a little bit more of that in me. What a good dude. Week from Saturday, Wildcat fans can get their first look at this year's football catch, UK's annual fan day, set for Saturday, August 6th at another field house. Doors open at 9 for an autograph session with the team. It ends at 10:15. There is a limit of one autograph per person, and Kentucky is asking fans not to pose for pictures with coaches and players. Fans can watch practice at the new UK practice facility from 11 to 12:30, and fans are asked to park in a blue lot adjacent to Commonwealth Stadium. Tonight on the Big Blue Insider with Dick Gabriel, former football Wildcat Jeremy Jarman talks about this year. That's at 6 on 630 WLAP. Mark Stoops, his coordinators, they're at the Jefferson County Alumni Club right now. We'll talk about that later. And the first round of the golf's last major of the year, the PGA Championship. That's all coming your way a bit later. But for now, guys, that's a look at sports on your Thursday. All right. Thank you very much, Buzz. It'll be interesting to uh, look ahead to the cat season. Absolutely. We'll Almost here. Later. Keep it here on WKYT for the next half hour of WKYT News at Noon. A would-be burglar gets more than he expected in a Kentucky home, but it's what he's accused of stealing that's making headlines. And Lexington police officers will soon be equipped with body cameras. Find out when they'll start recording. Coming up on WKYT News.
Tomorrow's Mega Millions is $20 million, and after no winner last night, Saturday's Powerball jackpot is $478 million.